Gordy, I'm Pastor Escalera, and I'm, I'm coming from Casa Emanuel, United Methodist Church. And I also thank you for being with us this morning, and so just join us in this worship service. Thank you. God has poured into our lives. Even though we hear words of doubt, we are called to believe. Even, Even though, though the world would draw us back into darkness, darkness we, we focus, focus on, on the light. Thanks be to Christ who give us the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And now our opening prayer says, Generous God, God we thank, we thank you, you for your presence with us in all our lives. As we gather this morning, we are reminded of the many times we have doubted and feared. Today, banish our fears with the memory of the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Remind us again that through all of our troubles, doubts, and fears, your power, mercy, and love are with us. Amen. Now let us go in singing our opening hymn number 327 in the United Methodist Hymnal, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
And now our Old Testament reading, which is, comes from Psalm 16, verses 5 through 11, in the, on 748 of the United Methodist Synod.
for the joy of Easter and the triumph of Easter songs. Yet, yet down the dark, like Thomas, not walk to the Indian countryside of Jesus. We still we have trouble believing in the resurrection of Jesus. We easily slip back into darkness of doubts. We move the joy of Easter into the past and continue in a downward path of confusion. Shine your bright and light of joy upon us, lighten our dark path. Help us to believe even though we have not seen you. Touch your hands and side. Help us to proclaim Jesus our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our worship assurance say, Do not fear, dear friends. Jesus is among us, offering us new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have been made new in Christ. Amen. Our anthem this morning is Alleluia, Alleluia, and thanks for listening.
my Lord and my God. Jesus then replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who do not see me and yet believe. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you is the theme for this sermon this morning. And so, thanks to the Gospel's narrative about the events which took place during the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we now know that Jesus was crucified and died on a misty and dusty Friday, with all the people waiting in a hurry, coming and going here and there, trying to accomplish their daily common chores right before the sunset. But in the meantime, Jesus' body was laid to rest in the tomb. Also, right before the sunset, in order to fulfill the law of Moses in regards to keeping the Sabbath as a day of rest to the Lord Yahweh. Now we also learn that on the first day of the week, early on a Sunday morning, right before the sunrise, Jesus was resurrected by the power of the Father. We also learn that it wasn't the three male disciples, Peter, John, and James, those who belonged to the inner circle of Jesus' friend, the first ones who received the good news that Jesus just had been raised from the dead. No, sir. It was rather the three brave female disciples, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother, James, and Salome, the ones who were blessed with the great news that Jesus had been raised from the dead. We now know that because of Jesus' resurrection, He embodied the good news of salvation for all humanity, including you and me and the rest of the world. You know, when, G when John the Baptist had been put in jail, he sent two of his disciples to ask Jesus a rather critical question. John's question was, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else? To which Jesus only replied to them, saying, Go and tell John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sights, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf can hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the good news are announced. And so the three women disciples experienced their most amazing ever vision where an angel appeared to them and announced them the news that Jesus was resurrected. Then the angel instructed them to go to tell Peter, James, and John, those who were members of the inner circle of Jesus, and to the other disciples, that Jesus was going ahead of them to Galilee. And so, on the evening of the first day of the week, as their hearts were still filled with fear and sadness, and they all were deeply concerned for their personal safety, after the arrest and death of the teacher and Lord, Jesus Christ, and the disciples were also about to have their most amazing ever, vision. You know, the reality was that deep in their hearts, they were deeply concerned and afraid of the great possibility that the Roman soldiers may come and they would be taken away for legal persecution. 
and then punishment and death on the cross. And that they may also suffer right the same punishment that of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, that of the cross we know was the Roman capital punishment for criminals and rebels who dared to stand against the Roman Empire in the first century Mediterranean world. And so now the most logical human reaction left for them was to run away to their headquarters and hide from the terrible possibility of death. And as soon as the last of the eleven disciples went in, the door was fully closed and the lock was on. Nevertheless, Jesus, like in one of those scary movies, without any warning, like a bad dream or some kind of evil hallucination, the disciples saw Jesus walking into the stone walls and stood up right into the middle of the room and said to them, Peace be with you, my brothers and sisters. And then, like a proof, without question, Jesus proceeded to show the fresh wounds of their hands and the side who's been pierced or which had been pierced. You know, watching someone who has been sick for a while, three months, let's say, with a terminal disease, dying slowly, witnessing the physical deterioration of a patient who's been slowly losing the battle, maybe cancer or any other illness, it's hard, especially for family members, right? Well, you know, witnessing a person who had been declared dead, but then all of a sudden the person comes back to life. And so now doctors have the responsibility to explain to their families and to members of the medical field that the person was not actually dead, they claim sometimes, but had only experienced what is known in the medical field like a near death experience. Let's come back to the story of Jesus, of Jesus' apparition to his disciples after his death. And so, attending a funeral, when you actually witness the person die and being laid down to rest in the grave, and then three days later in the funeral, the same group of people who attended that funeral and burial will get gather together witnessing the person who was laid in the grave walking into the stone walls and while staying in the middle of the room, all hear the person at the same time saying, Peace be with you. That, my brothers and sisters, must be a very frightening experience, right? And so I truly believe that there are no right words to describe such a wonderful but also gruesome and morbid event of the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus standing in the middle of the room greeting his disciples. This, my brothers and sisters, was the experience the disciples had when they saw Jesus standing in the room, greeting and showing them the fresh wounds of his hands, feet, and side. And so Thomas was one of the twelve. He was not with them by the time when Jesus appeared for the first time to the disciples. So one of the disciples gave him the good news and told him, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, uh-uh, no, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hands in his side, I will not believe. And so following the following week, his disciples were again in the house. And Thomas was in the house with them this time. And again, even though the doors were fully shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said once again, Peace to you. Then Jesus looked at Thomas and said, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Do not doubt but believe. You have believed because you have seen me now. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And so in the New Testament reading for this morning, we learn about what happened as a result of being new believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. First, we know that there were a unity of hearts and souls, and we know that it was likely that as human beings, they may also have their own way of seeing and understanding things, right? It's a human thing, and it's okay. However, when it came to things about the kingdom of God, they were always willing to make sacrifices for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know the story that people will sell the properties and will bring the money to the church so that all the needs of people were fulfilled. But also, no one claimed private ownership of things, but rather everything they had, they held in common. Also, the apostles had the ability to give their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They were not scared anymore to speak out about God. And then last but not least, there were no needs in the congregation because all they had, they brought it to the disciples. So that all the needs of the members of the church were fulfilled. Now, I think that it's okay before we close this sermon to get a couple of questions that may help us to reflect about Jesus, about God's service. These questions may also challenge our faith, our work in the church. So here's the first question. What are the things which scare us the most? And I'm speaking about the 20th first century, here and now. Is the gospel still relevant to us today? Is the gospel of going to the poor and open the doors to the strangers, is it still applicable to us today? Now, here's another question. What parts of the gospel do we think are not relevant to us here and now? Should we love our neighbors as we love ourselves? Should we open our doors to strangers and to the poor and to those who look different than we do? What is, what is it that keeps us from having unity of heart and soul just the same as the disciples were in their time? Here's the closing question. Are we as same as the disciples ready to share the good news of the kingdom of God in our community, beyond our communities, and even to the world in general. And so may the resurrected Jesus 
renew our joy and our strength to continue sharing with the world the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now let us now let us join in singing our closing hymn, number 176 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Majesty worship his majesty. Amen. Mm -hmm.